everybody, what's up? Baby Whack. Welcome back to my garden. Today I'm going to be talking about trellis and tomatoes. These things are going to look awesome. I don't know about your garden, but I literally get thousands of emails every single day because my garden is so much better than everybody else's on the internet. And today I'm going to show you how to grow some amazing tomato plants. Not only is this method totally easy, but it's gonna give you 3,000% more tomatoes than anybody else. So this is the correct way and the right way that you should do it. It's awesome, guys. Well, hello, all of you beautiful, gorgeous people. Welcome back to the garden. Hooray. Um, since last time you've saw this, it, ha it hasn't been that long, maybe like four days or something like that. But uh, I'm kind of just taking a step back from the garden a little bit and relaxing and trying to readjust my focus because I'll admit I've been real... I've been kind of bogged down by just trying to keep up with everything and it's been so hot. My goodness, it's been hot. And uh, the whole living in a tent situation and everything like that really kind of takes a toll on you after a while. So I've just kind of stepped back a little bit. But this is going to be another update. I do feel like things have grown, so hopefully you will enjoy it. Uh, taking a wide look at the garden here, all the sunflowers are getting ready to bloom. And that's pretty exciting. And my vines are going up my trellis. Tomatoes are still sprawling everywhere. For the most part, things are looking pretty good. And I would say I can't complain, but I, I realized I say you can't complain about it. I realized I say that like all the time, which is true. It's kind of been adopted into like my life motto is, uh, well, can't complain about it and just accept what comes your way. And that's all you can really do. You know what I mean? Anyhow, kind of moving in here and taking a closer look at things. There's a, a lot going on. The dahlias are actually blooming for the first time this year. I uh, usually have a somewhat of a bit of trouble growing dahlias here. It gets too hot. And I think the thing I finally figured it out is just I don't water them enough. Uh, I fed these with seabird guano. And they're responding really well to those. There are so many blooms and the plants are a nice size. Dumb me forgot to stake them. So they're kind of sprawled out. I need to find some stakes for these so I can stake them up and they won't be all over the ground. But uh, this was a value pack from like Walmart or something. It was like five, no, three bulbs for five dollars or something like that. They're supposed to be different colors. The first one here is this bright red. It's not really bright red in real life. I think anybody who's grown red flowers gets what I'm saying. In real life, it's kind of more of a darker red, like a crimson, I guess, if I had to explain it. It's not really this bright red like you see on the screen. Anyhow, those are opening up, and they look pretty good. And I have had no trouble with earwigs so far, which is exciting because earwigs are annoying. So I'm happy to see that. Uh, in the future, we'll do a video about how to use these as cut flowers. I think I can make a pretty good video about that, even though I have... Not as much experience as I would like with dahlias, but I think I know enough to make a pretty good video about it, at least. So that's something to look forward to in the future if you have dahlias in bloom. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to stake these up and clean these up and get them looking good. Oh, by the way, the cat is with me today in the garden, so you'll see a lot of video footage of my cat coming along. He likes, I always call it. I always say he when I'm talking about animals. This, my cat's a girl, but I think she's used to it by now. The corn is uh, looking pretty good. Well, I mean, as good as it is to be expected. I'm not really <laughs> expecting too much from it. The, the cobs really are a good size, and um, they're doing well. I mean, they're not ready yet. I actually went ahead and, uh, I don't know, unhusk, dehusk, opened one. I don't know what word I should use for that, really. I went ahead and uh, opened one up just to get a picture, shot, video footage of a unripe ear of corn because eventually, you know, I'd like to do a video about growing corn in my little small garden and it always helps to have the actual footage of things like that because, I mean, people want to see stuff, especially if you've never grown stuff before. I mean, I really want to try to do my best to make it, uh, like, detailed, like, this is what this looks like because, I mean... Looking back eight years ago when I started gardening, that's really what would have helped me the most. And uh, I just, I want to be as helpful as possible. So that's just kind of what I'm going to do. Um, 
of course, obviously these things take a lot of time to collect and you know, you gotta wait for stuff to grow and then you gotta make sure you're not deleting the files that you actually recorded and if you're scatterbrained like me, it's actually quite an achievement once you get everything, you know, set. The actual pollination of these, I'm surprised, looks really good. This is a really nice looking ear of corn for the most part. It's a little bit malformed. I'm not mis malformed? Misformed? I don't know. Do I speak English? Yes, I guess I do. Anyway, the pollination looks pretty good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about it. But seriously, usually my pollination corn is a lot worse. I made it so intentional this year that I was gonna get good pollination, and I think maybe if we're lucky that uh, attention to detail is gonna pay off whenever we finally do get to harvest some corn. The beans and squash are still on here. Y'all saw this just like not too long ago. I will say uh, I did have a couple squash uh, aborted. I had a couple of the actual, you know, fruits drop off the plants. I can only attribute that to stress, heat stress. It's been hot here. And plus, there was like 26 fruits on this thing. I mean, it's probably for the best that a couple of them dropped off. So, I'm not going to worry about that at all. Um, other than the heat, I don't see any really signs of insect pressure or anything like that. I did pluck a few leaves that had powdery mildew on that, but I'm trying to... You know keep that from spreading as much as possible so i sh should be okay there i hope the sunflowers in the garden are of course still reaching really high some of them are like 14 foot tall and things like that anyhow things are looking pretty good uh the cat is the cat has made sure to lay on all the seedlings in the garden i planted some carrots actually it's about three inch spacing between these holes. I went ahead and put them in the holes because, you know, the plastic was already down. So I said, why not? And I threw some carrot seedlings in there. We have a little bit of germination so far. The cat is laying on top of some of them, but, oh, uh, who cares? For the most part, she does a really good job of keeping things out of the yard. So I'm not going to uh, worry about if she smashes a couple carrots or anything because... Because, I don't know, she lives here too, so. It is what it is. I don't know how a stray cat can suddenly turn into, like, a spoiled, rotten cat. Seriously, this thing was so afraid of people just six years ago when she first showed up. And now she's a total love muffin. It's great. Anyhow, uh, you know, marigolds and everything are still in bloom. Cucumbers are still making cucumbers. I mean, I can only show you guys this so much. I know it's not very exciting. I'm sorry it's not. Overall, things have seemed to get, like, a foot taller over the past week or so. It's just really that point in the season where things are just growing like crazy. And I'm having a hard time keeping up with all the harvests. And you'll see some of the harvests a little later. In this video, there is a tomato harvest and a pepper harvest is in this video. So do stay tuned if you want to see that. Uh, hopefully you do want to see that. It's actually a pretty good one. I was pleasantly surprised because I've been getting pretty good harvests on a daily basis here. I've also started to finally harvest some okra. The seeds that I've planted are germinating too. I planted hollyhocks in that last video. It's been about three days since that video and the hollyhocks have already... Uh, come up, you'll see those later. I'm not quite sure how long later. I'm terrible at organizing videos, but this is the cat laying in the hollyhock bed because she just lays everywhere she wants to. Alright. Anyway, hopefully none of those get smashed because I don't feel like replanting those, seriously. Like I said, the okra, it's doing well. It's hard to get in there. I would, like, make a video of harvesting okra, but it is just so hard to get in there. It's practically impossible. The peppers have grown exponentially since the last video, even though that was only like three days ago. I did go through and specifically pick some of the green peppers off there because they were just, uh, they were getting huge and I wanted the plant to uh, kind of expand its energy into making some more peppers beyond what was already on there. I'm trying to teach my cat to use a shovel. It's not working out too well, unfortunately. The zinnias and everything are also still growing. The powdery mildew on the zinnias is, I mean, it's kind of not getting better, but it's not really getting worse. I've started treating it with some of the ideas y'all gave me, but uh, they're going to have to come out sooner or later. I still don't like, actually, the powdery mildew existing in the garden to where it can spread. Uh, they're probably going to come out 
as soon as this main flush of blooms is over, as much as I hate to say that, I can only imagine that this is a result of that early planting. I probably should have waited for, you know, the weather to warm up before I planted them. But you live and you learn, I guess. Here's a nice aerial shot of the um, amaranth or starting to send uh, little flower heads up. It's so funny. I need to like buy a drone or something. I think I would have so much fun with it, but not in this yard because it would be miserable because I'd always be recording things that ain't nobody want to see it because I don't live... Seriously, you don't want to see this place. Anyhow, um, I'm really just loving the colors on these zinnias and enjoying waiting for the amaranth to kind of come into their, their own and waiting for the vines on the fence to kind of just really get, you know, really spread and stuff like that. The tomatillas and the tomatoes, they are still looking really good. The tomatillos have officially reached six foot tall. They are taller than me now. And it's really kind of incredible because, I mean, I've grown tomatillos before, but I've never had them be six foot tall before, so that's something weird. So in other news, the, uh, the seeds that we planted for our biennials and our fall garden, the vegetable seeds, are doing really well. And most of them have germinated, even the ones that I wasn't really sure about, like the verbascum and things like that. Uh, there are a couple who have not started to grow yet, uh, most notably the Dusty Miller and the Rudbeckia. I know Rudbeckia sometimes takes a little bit longer. So, I mean, it's only been like three days since I did this, since I sowed them. So I'm not too terribly concerned yet. In fact, I'm kind of wondering how these things germinated so quickly, especially, you know, I don't know, some of the flower seeds. I really, really was not expecting it, but that's awesome. So I can't wait to, uh, I don't know, I guess get that situated and we'll have to find a spot for them in the garden because at this point uh, everything's so grown up. I'm not really quite sure where I'm going to put these things. Uh, I had some hornworms on my peppers. I'm not sure why they were on my peppers, but whatever. They got thrown over the fence. I don't want them back here. These things are gross. Like, get out of my yard. Here's a little bit better view of the zinnias. You can see the powdery mildew. So disappointing. These colors look so nice though. They're so like hot. That's the thing about summer colors is they always are just so like in your face and vibrant. And I, I guess I just describe them as hot. Like, ouch. Like, yeah, yeah, here you are. I don't know. I'm weird. Uh, I've been getting a pretty good, pretty steady tomato harvest. Uh, I don't know. Almost every day. Here's a, what it pretty much looks like on the regular. It's been like this for about a week or so, I guess. Things are just really coming on now. And the fruits are just ripening up over and over. I had a lot of cherry tomato plants. I think um, maybe three-fourths or over half of the plants that I planted were cherry tomatoes of various sizes and colors. You can see this, there's some pears in here, some grape tomatoes, or some yellow pears, some orange ones. This one looks like a butt crack. I don't know. Some of them are a little bit small. I think, of course, that can be expected with the super close planting that I have. But, uh, these are some really great salad tomatoes. So, that's perfectly fine with me. We'll make a nice, uh, tomato salad or something like that. Also, I wanted to go ahead and pick some of the peppers that I have. Because these plants are loaded down. And I really wanted to go ahead and grab some of these before the insect pressure got too bad. I saw a couple things in here. And, uh, plus I want these to set more fruit, so I don't want them to spend all their time and energy ripening up these huge things. These are the Spanish mammoths. If you're wondering why there's that, uh, bar down there, I dug this cardboard out of a trash can and that's somebody's address. I didn't want to broadcast somebody's address to the internet, so shout out to that person that, uh, got this cardboard from. Anyway, those are the Spanish mammoths. They're pretty big, um, I'm... Definitely surprised by that. They're nice and long, and the walls seem really thick. Uh, lots of flesh. I also have these uh, banana peppers. I think these are banana peppers. I'm not quite sure. Uh, these were in a mix. They might be Hungarian hot wax or something. If I had to guess, I'd say they're either that or the banana peppers. These things are enormous. I can't get over how big these things are. These things almost make the Spanish mammoth peppers look small if that's even possible. The plants are completely loaded down. 
And I'm just picking the ones that were, like, big. I'm not even picking the ones that were, you know, a smaller size and stuff. I just, I can't get over how well these peppers are doing. I just, I think I finally got the right combination at, for feeding and stuff this year. And I think the spacing is really good. Uh, you can see even these bell peppers, they're a bell pepper mix. I don't know what varieties they are. It was just, you know, a mixed package that I got. These are so meaty, it's insane. And the size is really good. Uh, these yellow peppers, I want to like wrap these in bacon and stuff them with cream cheese or something. I don't know. I might throw them on the grill. I really don't know what I should do with these. If you have any recipes for like banana peppers or something that are your absolute favorites, let me know and I'll, I'll try them out. Most of them look pretty good with the exception of this one that was kind of like brown and crusty at the tip. But I mean, that's the only one. So whatever. I'm not going to argue with um, pesticide free delicious organic produce that you know whatever anyhow you can see I have tons of these things I could probably like pickle them and make some rings or something but I don't really like that probably end up freezing most of this make a meatloaf or something I don't know do I look like a homemaker to you I'm not obviously uh, some people in the comments have told me that uh, very rudely but that's besides the point I always get distracted when the cat is out in the garden with me and we end up uh, just goofing off and wasting a bunch of time. If you're wondering, the main reason this video is so long is just I've decided just to go with the longer format and it will probably be less often than I do this format, but uh, the, the videos will be longer and there might be a couple more ads. It's just... You know, it's so hard to grow a channel, and I get so frustrated. And, you know, I feel like I've put so much work into this channel and taking the time to, like, I don't know, and make sure that I set up, like, good shots for it and that it looks nice. And I know I'm not the best editor. I wouldn't claim to be, but I try. And then, you know, you see somebody upload a cell phone video that it makes everybody seasick, but it gets, like, 50,000 views. And it's a bummer. I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. Uh, I've I've definitely thought about making some different videos. More of like parody videos. Poking fun at other people. But I don't know how, how y'all are going to take that. So let me know if that's something like more funny videos. But uh, it seems like every time I do that. Just everybody downvotes it to all get out. So I probably won't do that either. If I'm being totally honest, I'm just not feeling motivated at all. Like, don't get me wrong, I love growing stuff and I love making these videos. And I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. And I do know that, you know, there's a place. Because, I mean, I didn't know how to grow any of these flowers. And I don't, I had to learn pretty much about trial and error. And um, I'm just kind of burnt out, I guess. And I'm just going to step back a little bit. Hopefully you can get the house in order and everything and I won't have to worry about um, things that are stressing me out. I'm tired of watering these freaking containers. These freaking herb containers. Never again. I'm not planting containers again. I am so tired of watering these things. And also, I've been watering those, you know, those little seed containers that I just started for the fall, fall planting. I normally don't water my garden at all, so it's just... I don't know. I just get overwhelmed and tired of watering things because I really just hate to take care of things. I'd rather it just take care of itself and uh, maybe my YouTube channel will start taking care of itself too. Last but not least in this video I just wanted to I guess make a quick jar vase of flowers. I have all of these zinnias you know and like I said, it's all the hot colors. There's no like cutesy tootsy pink pastel and orange pastels. These things are like super saturated. Like, I am orange. Hello. Pay attention to me. The colors are just so bright in your face right now. There really isn't much to go by in terms of, you know, subtlety. So I picked out some orange flowers today. And I decided I would just go ahead and make one of those in-your-face flower arrangements. I just started out with some kale that I still have growing in the garden. And I used that as the base of my filler. This kale has been going since fall. You remember I cut it all back. It's just, it regrew from the stump. That's fine. It tastes alright. It's not bad. And uh, after I put the kale in there as the main kind of filler and base to this. Kind of gave it some structure. I just went ahead and added 
orange and some salmon colored zinnias. And I added some rudbeckias that I had. These are winter sown rudbeckias. And I'm really happy that they finally bloomed. These are really pretty. This is, I believe, the prairie sun rudbeckia. They're the ones with the green centers. Just grab some of those. Gotta be careful not to bruise or damage those petals. So some of them are definitely beyond um, their prime. That's for sure. But I'm just kind of winging it. Uh, this is just gonna probably get given away. I gotta give it away to somebody. I don't really have a table for it to go on, you know. Um, after I kind of put the Rudbeckia and the Zinnias in there with the kale, I grabbed some of my basil, which is going to seed. Uh, this is my, uh, what is this? Is this sweet basil? I'm not quite sure. I honestly am drawing a blank. I don't remember what kind of basil. I think it's sweet basil. Sweet basil? It's sweet basil. Let's just go with that. I am putting sweet basil in the vase, and uh, they look nice. Cause little flower spikes give it a little bit of height and a different kind of texture, I guess, other than, you know, the round blooms. Plus, it smells really nice. You know, in the beginning, I was kind of hard on myself for having so much basil in the garden, but now that it's, like, blooming and stuff, and I've already harvested so much, I really like having all that basil, and I'm definitely going to do it again <laughs> next year and whenever else. Um, there's no reason really not to have all of that. The finished flower arrangement looks pretty cute, and I, I can't complain with it. I'm probably just going to give it away to somebody in my family. I'm sure they'll enjoy it. I mean, it's always nice to have fresh flowers in the house, and you need a little bit of a pick-me-up, you know. You never know. That's really about it for this video. I wish I had more to say. I wish I had more to offer, more, you know, insight to give you. Uh, be on a lookout for a video sometime next week. This is probably going to be the only video this week just because I think I need to just slow down and regroup myself and uh, keep going. I looked at my oldest video. I've been doing this since uh, September 25th, 2015 and uh, over that time I am almost to 400 videos. I think this is like my 370th video and uh, I know for some people that might, might not seem like very much but to me, it feels like so many, and uh, a lot of the ones in the beginning, they were pretty much garbage posts and everything, but I'm just going to stay on my course and focus on uh, doing this. I've been just working so much lately in addition to doing the whole YouTube thing, you know, like I work all day long and then like maybe I'll get, you know, the end of the day and I'll just record uh, six videos in one go. And then record the audio for it. And it does get a little bit frustrating. But anyway, I digress. We won't get into that now. Uh, let me know what y'all want to see down in the comments. Do you want to see more updates? Do you want to see growing gods? Do you want to see more flower stuff? Do you want to see more soap making stuff? Do you want to see more book reviews? Do you want me to just shut up and quit the channel? Uh, just let me know. And I'll be more than happy to try to accommodate you. I've been doing a little bit of shopping around trying to find you know an actual farm and things and it's just so frustrating because it seems like no matter uh how much i try or what i go into nothing seems to work out and i'm so annoyed i'm not annoyed by the garden i'm just annoyed so nothing against the garden but it is what it is and that's all that it is i can't help it uh, i really do appreciate your support it means so much to me and again i'm sorry for the extra abs that just helps the channel i know it's it's dumb but it's the truth and every little bit helps and by watching those ads you guys really are helping me and uh tell me what you want to see down in the comments because if there's a flower or something you want to see i'll try to hunt it down and see if we can make that possible no promises of course but i'm always trying to expand my horizons and keep my mind open and uh, I think that's really one of the best ways to just grow as a person, as a gardener, keep your mind open and be willing to try new things and all that stuff. So I hope y'all are having a real great day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye guys.